So this is gonna be the first video you're doing since should coming I not back. Wear my hat. Yeah, I don't think you should wear it. Cause look, I look like I look like Cody. Look. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely look like Cody. <laughs> you like that? You definitely look like Cody now. That's pretty funny. You got like perfect. <laughs> Except you know, I've got the hair in the middle, but other than that. Oh yeah, yeah, date. <laughs> you know, if we had Cody sitting right here, right next to him, Cody, come here. You gotta get in this shot. You gotta get right beside Dave. I mean, this is like almost like a spitting image, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like oh yeah. man, that is pretty ironic. That's right what now. I've been growing my hair out for, so you can come up and look like Cody. Hell yeah, Cody gets mad play. <laughs> he's definitely, uh, he's definitely doing all right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show, and we have Dave back finally. Dave's back after a long year of being on some sort of a. Horrible vacation. Dave is finally back with us, and this is just a really awesome thing. Having you back out here in the free world, man. I mean, you had to go turn yourself in about a year ago for a probation violation. You served your time. We thought you were going to be getting out early yesterday, and unfortunately, you didn't get released till about 3 o'clock. You haven't even been home for 24 hours yet. It's only about 1 o'clock in the afternoon right now as we're filming this. But Dave, talk to me a little bit about how you're feeling, what your first day has been like. It's been, it's been crazy. It's just like been... Non-stop, you gotta, you gotta know, I've been on pause, and y'all been going, and I just like, it was like double dutch, you know what I'm saying? I come out. I don't know what you're saying, actually. I have no idea this double dutch reference you're trying to make here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it down for you real quick. Okay. Y'all are going, and I haven't been doing nothing, and then I just like jumped in the middle of this, and, and now I'm moving along with you. you so, what it's, so what you're saying is it's almost like you never left. Yeah. But, Except you did leave. But I did. And you left for a long time. Could have been longer. Very true. I mean, you definitely uh, you definitely were fortunate in the fact that it was only a year. And just like you said, it definitely could have been a lot worse. I'm, I'd say so far, the food was a great experience. The food we ate last night was great. And you know, we didn't get a chance to film last night. We did go out to dinner. It was me, my fiance, Dave, an awesome supporter of After Prison Show, also joined us last night, and Cody. And we took Dave to a really nice restaurant last night. And I mean, you were eating all sorts of stuff. You were eating some sushi. Yeah, man, the, the sushi nachos thing that I ate? Poke nachos. Poke nachos was okay. And something that I will never eat, but it's definitely a favorite of my fiance and a lot of other people. Well, I like you. sushi. It was cool. Your, you and your, oh, and your fiance were super cool about the whole thing. You were like, "Yo, you should try this." You know, y'all were just like, "Try this, try this." What do you like? You like this? Yeah. And I just started naming things I like. I ended up eating the poke nachos, which is. Sushi nachos. Right. Spicy. This was really literally spicy. the first thing Dave was eating coming home from serving the time that he did. The first meal Dave ate was some sushi. Yeah. And then vampire tacos. And those were pretty good. I've never had them, but I've heard they of them. They are awesome. They're, it's not even a taco shell. It was just like a layer of cheese for the taco shell. They just cooked it into a taco shell with food and fresh cilantro. It was really good. It was really good. So you had a really awesome first night. Absolutely. Well, with this yeah. video, and again, with this being Dave's first day home, I'm sure this is something he's not going to want to do at all. But if you saw yesterday's video where we went and we picked him up, you saw that Dave was released with this big black trash bag full of stuff that you brought home. You said that a lot of guys were mad in the jail that you were taking all of this stuff home, but you wanted to bring this home so you could share it with After Prison Show. Absolutely, yeah. And if you would, just pick this bag up because this is, a, this is an unbelievably heavy bag he brings home. <coughs> this is all of what Dave brought home from the year that he spent locked up. Is that your little uh, <laughs> your water bag? That's what you work out with? <laughs> the little weight bag? Actually, they got... They can't really, they, they take it, but they can't really say nothing. You can't get in trouble for the water bag now because you buy 20 ounce bottles of soda on commissary. Right. So guys will save them, fill them up with water. Fill them up with water, put them in a laundry bag. You fill a laundry bag with like 15, it's like a 40 pound. Yeah. Yeah, it's decent. 
But again, you came home with all of this stuff uh, yesterday, and I know there's a lot of things that you want to share with us, things that you've brought home. And I mean, basically, this is your entire last year in this bag. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. This is... <clears throat> it's crazy that you just put it that way. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Talk to me a little bit first, uh, before we even get into this, just talk to me a little bit. Give me a quick rundown of some of the stuff that you brought home with you. Um, I brought home, I got a lot of books. I got a lot of books in here. And then I brought home a few different things. Um, a friend of mine, you know, made a cup for me. I brought the cup home. I wanted to show everybody the cup. And you showed me that a little while ago. It was pretty interesting. I'm sure everybody's going to get a kick out of seeing this. But, and I don't mean to be cutting you up. I apologize no. for that because it probably seems like I just did that. But I want to say something real quick. You say you, you brought a lot of books home. And obviously you can see with the shirt that Dave's wearing, he's got the APS Army shirt on. This is something that an awesome supporter of After Prison Show created for him, for me, for Cody. We all have shirts like these. But the point that I want to bring up with everything is, Dave, you had a tremendous amount of support. Man, by, f by far, it was way... Way beyond anything I could have imagined, you know, they made the the army made this so easy, you know, that made the time com made me comfortable. I I would say the time won't easy. I was explaining that to you, yeah, earlier. It won't easy, you know, but it was. I was comfortable. I was able to, you know, if I was hungry, you know, they people made sure that I had something to eat. I got books so I could always read because. In the jail I was in, they did not bring the library card. There was no library in this jail. Um, you know, it was just, it was it was tremendous amount of support. It was it was so crazy because I, it was coming from all different angles. You know, there were so many people that were trying to help me. You know, and you've never had this type of support before with all of the time you've served in the past. No, I've never had any kind of support like that either. So I can just imagine, you know, seeing all of these people, the entire APS Army, and so many of them who did care for you, still care for you, and showed support throughout the time that you just served. I know that has to be a really amazing feeling, even in such a bad situation. Absolutely, and all I can say is, you know, thank y'all, man. I love you so much. It was just, you know, it was. You know, I'm beyond words to, to describe how I felt. So, all I can say is thank you. Before we get into the bag of everything that Dave brought home, I do want you to tell a really quick story. You told this to me uh, yesterday, and it deals with this right here that I'm holding. <laughs> and what this is, is a piece of Dave's jail armband. This is his ID card inside of the jail, basically. And I want you to tell everybody the story about the picture on here and also explain to everybody what happened to you with this entire situation overall and how you ended up going from one jail and being transferred to the other. Well, if y'all remember, for those of y'all that were watching then, when I first turned myself in, Joe set up a video visit. I was in um, Chesapeake Jail. A video visit is pretty much Skype. We have these video screens in the pod and, you know, your friends and family can call up and pay, you know, whatever they charge them to link up for 20 minutes on these video visits. And it's just a Skype visit. Well, Joe had set one up and he went live on YouTube while uh, while we were doing the visit. Yeah. And it was like... This was during the time we were trying to get you a lawyer. It was like... What, like... 3,000 people or 2,000 people watching? I think it was actually 4,000, but... That's a lot it, of people, dude. It was probably one of the most popular live streams that we did with the visit with you in jail. But uh, with the amount of... The tremendous amount of outpouring for support to help Dave get a lawyer uh, with that live stream visit that we did, there was also some negativity that came from that as well. You know, the guy who did this is dead. And the crazy thing is, he just did it because he was hating. He he was hating because, you know, he was still in that lifestyle, and he seen me crawling out of it. Right. And it, and we used to be really tight, not just, you know, before the drugs, you know. And now he, you know, his son is fatherless. You know, his mom lost, you know, one of her sons, and it's just a sad situation. 
I was mad at him at first about the whole thing because, you know, of, of how it panned out. But what happened was he seen the video visit and he seen all the support and I guess he was bitter about it. Well, he called Chesapeake Jail and told them that I wrote a letter to my sister telling her that I was going to commit live on YouTube from a video visit. Now, he, hold on, I, I'm trying to follow here. So he's saying he saw that on the video visit? No, he saw us on the video visit. Right. So he knew that I was locked up. Oh, okay. And then he called the jail and told them... That you wrote a letter to your sister. Yeah, that I wrote a letter to my sister. I love you, Danielle. I wrote a letter to my sister and said that, said that I was going to commit... So this was a, a Sunday morning. I was in the shower. We did the video visit Saturday night. Sunday morning, I was in the shower. It was about 10 o'clock. And they came in the pod while I was in the shower, like 10 deep, and surrounded the shower was, and just like, you know, butt naked, just pulls the curtain back, and they're like, you know, go ahead, dry off, rinse off. I'm like, can, I'm like trying to close the curtain, they're like, no. <laughs> so I finished taking my shower butt naked for all the police to watch, and I'm like, man, what is this about, you know what I'm saying? All I can think of is what we thought in the beginning, not this thing, just Somebody the publicity that would come, the bad publicity that would come from doing the Skype visit, people finding out what jail I'm in, calling it, causing problems with the jail, and then me having to, you know, take the, the blunt or the... You know. Take the fall for everything. Yeah, right. right. So I, I'm like, I already know what this is about. That's what I start telling them. I already know what this is about. You know what I'm saying? It's about my visit yesterday. And they're like, what visit? I was like, oh, Lord. They take me down, put me in this one man cell, and then they strip me, and they leave me in this cell. They put me in suicide watch. If you remember a long time ago, me and Joe did a video, and we were talking about, you know, things that suck in prison and one of them is ending up in suicide watch but naked in a paper or plastic suit well they got these things now they're called um turtle suits yeah i've talked about those before right it's like it's made of like uh, i don't know how they make it like you couldn't pull a string off this thing you know what i'm saying and there's no and it's just like all like heavy it's like it, Teflon. It looks like the thing they cover your genitals with when you go get an x-ray. That's what it feels like it's made out of, like lead. It's just like this heavy, and that's all you got. I was sitting in there, and I tell them what happened. You know, and, and the, po the, the, the officer actually tells me who did it. When the name comes up, I'm like, ah, oh, I know... Like, call my sister. Here's the number. She, I ain't even been here long enough to write a letter and for it to get anywhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, oh, all right. So they call my sister. My sister verifies that she never got a letter from me, you know, that I would never, you know, hurt myself. They still leave me in there. They're like, oh, it's, you know, it's protocol. It's protocol. You have to stay until you see... Um, Psychiatric. Yeah, mental health. Mental health has to come and talk to you before we can take you out of here. Well, it's Sunday. Mental health ain't there on the weekends. Guess what Monday is? A holiday. Yeah, it was Memorial Day. Mental health doesn't come in Monday either. They finally come in Tuesday morning. I've been in this jank almost going 48 hours, right? They come, they're like, you're leaving this morning. You're coming out of here this morning. So I'm waiting in there. Like two hours goes by. Mind you, I'm freezing cold. It's so cold in here, and so that I, what I do is I that whole turtle suit I like take it all completely off of me and use it as a blanket instead of trying to get inside of it. I, and that's why they call it a turtle suit, because what people normally do is they just suck their arms, suck their legs in, and pull it up over their head, and they just crawl inside this thing to try and get warm because it's 
Literally, it's so cold in there, you could just hear the air blowing out of the vent. It's just like... And I'm free. Finally, they come. Mr. Huh. They throw the jumpsuit in there. Put this on. Slide my sliders underneath the thing. Give me my glasses back. You know, I'm like, oh, man, I'm coming out. They come back like 15 minutes later. Pull me out. And it's commissary day. You know, I'm like... Oh, man, y'all got me out just in time for commissary. I get out. They put me in a wheelchair, wheel me straight to booking. I get to booking. All my properties there and the big bag of commissaries there. But you have no idea why you're going to booking. Yeah, I'm like, uh, mind you, I'm freaking out. I'm like, why am I here? Why am I in booking? Because usually anytime you go to booking, it's going to be for an additional charge. Yeah, Something's you, popped up. They're coming to charge you with something else. Yeah, you're either getting released or they're adding to it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I knew I won't get in release. So I'm freaking out. And they're like, oh, you're going to Hampton Roads Regional Jail. I was like, oh, Lord. Did they tell you anything about why they were transferring you? Well, they told me it was there was a lot of you know, backlash from that. Um, the, the, the live stream. Right. You know, a couple cool CEOs told me that. The reason they gave me was because my leg. And, and they got better, better medical. That's what Hampton Roads Regional Jail is. It's a medical jail. Right. Because at first, my assumption was it was because of the live stream, because of a lot of things that maybe or might not have transpired. We still don't know, you know what really went down with that. But again, Hampton Roads Regional Jail did have better medical. And with the fact that you know they're having to wheel you around in the wheelchair, you're still having a lot of problems with your legs or with your leg. They end up transferring you over there. Yeah, well, I get over there, and you got to go, you know, through intake all over again, booking. They take down all your information, what medication you're taking. You know, they ask you all these questions, and uh, they got to give me a new wristband. The whole point of the story is this wristband. They, so they got to give me a new wristband because I'm at a different jail. And there's like, you know, it's like a thing. It's like it's like the booth at DMV where you would go get your picture taken. You right. know what I'm saying? Gray it wall. Like, yeah, it's just like that, right? So I go, literally, there's the gray wall, yeah. right? So I go stand at the gray wall. He's like, stand on the X. I got my crutches on with me. So I'm like leaning on my crutches. And I'm like, I'm happy. You got to understand, for the past 48 hours, I've been in I watch. So like everybody I see, I'm like running my mouth. Like, oh my God, so good to see you. For those, How have you been? <laughs> for those of you who may remember Dave from the past when he was a big part of After Prison Show, the hashtag STFU, you know, <laughs> shut the F up. Yeah. Dave, because Dave does like to talk to everybody. And, you know, I can imagine, you know, you're coming out of, you know, being in this lockdown, butt ball naked, and you're just around people again. So once you're locked up and you're seeing people, you've got a chance to talk to them. And with you yeah. being one that likes to talk, I'm sure you were going. Yeah, I was going in. I was talking to everybody. Well, we're talking, and I'm the guy's trying to get my picture, and I'm talking to the 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 lady officer right here, and then another guy walks up, and he's like, um, he's looking at my paperwork. I'm like, man, yeah, I just did you know 48 hours in suicide watch, man. I can't wait to just get the pod, and, you know, use the phone, and he's like. You know, it's protocol. As soon as I heard that, I was like. You know it was going to be bad news. Protocol? What's protocol? What is the, what's the protocol now? Like, what is, what is this, this protocol you speak of? And uh, <laughs> he drops the bomb. He goes, yeah, you're going to have to do another 24 hours in suicide watch because they didn't clear you in Chesapeake. So you have to do 24 hours here in our jail so we know and we can clear you. And as soon as he said that, I was just like, and the stupid dude with the camera is like, Hush, and takes the picture with the shock of the having to go back into suicide watch, man. And so like, if you can get a good, can we? That's Dave's face right there. Immediately upon receiving the news that he was going to have to spend another 24 hours in, <laughs> in lockdown. <laughs> in Chesapeake, I had a map. This jail, the I watched was like 
being locked in a Cuban refugee camp by freaking Castro himself. It was the worst experience of my life. I thought I just came from hell. This was, it was like, they gave me the turtle suit. They walk, they take the cuffs off of me, get me out the wheelchair, and I go into the, um, into the cell, right? Hopping on one leg. Or no, crutching into the cell. And he's like, let me see your crutches. He gives me the crutches. I give him the crutches. And then he closes the door. I was like, hey, I need a mat. He was like, no mat. <laughs> I was like, hold up. No mat? This is concrete, dude. There wasn't even a bed in here. It was just an empty box. The toilet didn't even flush, dude. Like, it was... I felt like I was in Iraq or something. I don't know what to do. I, I literally was like, oh no, this can't be happening. And I've slept for 48 hours. There's no way I'm going to be able to sleep for the next 24 hours. So I literally was like up for a whole day in this guy. And it was twice as cold. And what did you do? How did, how did you pass the time in here? I mean, obviously you're probably thinking a lot. You're probably just going crazy. You want the truth? I mean, yeah. I jerked off the whole time. <laughs> I mean... You got to pass the time one way. You know, and it probably kept you warm as well. Well, actually, I didn't jerk off the whole time. I jerked off once. and So you just told me a lie. Well, there's a... I wanted to jerk off the whole time, but there's a... A camera. Camera. And I didn't even notice it at first because it's like covered up. It's like in the corner and the police come to me and they just tap on the door. I'm like, yo, you can't do that. I was like, do what? You know. I was like, my bad. (laughs) I didn't know what to say. Pretty embarrassing. Caught me. I got caught a couple times during it (laughs) all. They do... Rounds are constantly doing rounds. I was like, and then I heard keys and I look and he's just like standing there like, dude, you can't do that. I'm like, God, why would you just stand there and look at me? <laughs> but anyway, we got to go ahead and move on. But I did want to, I, I did want Dave to share that story with you. And he's got a lot of other stories, especially about a lot of crazy fights that not only he was involved in, but these crazy fights that he saw taking place while he was serving his time. We're going to save these stories for another time. But Dave, let's go ahead and start going through this bag of stuff that you brought home. And let's take a look at some of what what you've got in here. All right. You got some cargo shorts. Those are the shorts you were wearing the day... uh, Yeah, these are the shorts. The day you got locked up. Yeah. um, They don't fit. They're a little too small. I'm sure. I mean, you definitely gained a little bit of weight. I tried. Oh, you busted the seam in them. No, I, I... Cut. <laughs> oh, you tried to helm them? No, I cut them. I had the lady cut them to see if it would. It no, they're still no. too tight. So you got the shorts that you got that you wore on the day that you turned yourself in. Yeah. Oh man. The one shoe. Me and Cody talked about this. We wondered if you were going to be coming out with, uh, you know, with one shoe on. One shoe. You were wearing that the day. Uh, the day you turned yourself in as well. There's mold on this shoe. Let me see. Because oh if you because re- if you remember, it was raining. It was raining, so the shoe was wet, and then it went right into a bag, in a box, and just sat there for a year. You know, I want to ask you this while we're on this subject. But after you turned yourself in, on that day that you turned yourself in, it was piss pouring down, rain outside. Right after you did that, did you have any, I mean, I'm sure you did, did you have any feelings of regretting doing that? Like, man, I I really wish I didn't do this. And I'm talking about actually turning yourself in. No. That's pretty impressive. Um, I don't, do you, me and you had a talk before, you know, we went in and you were like, you know, when we found out, you were like, so what are you going to do? You know, it was like, you didn't want to tell me what I needed to do. You wanted to see, like... Would you do the right thing? Yeah, like, what is... What's going through your mind right now? You know, and... 
after prison show really helped me stay clean. Like, I've made some really bad decisions in my life, right? But the incentive behind being a part of this, you know, really helped me make right decisions. And knowing that I was handling something that needed to be taken care of, you know, and making the right decision. You know, it was like, it was all at the, the right time. You know, I got clean and then a big decision came that I had to make a choice. You know what I'm saying? And I made the right one. So it felt good. So the whole time that I was locked up, I really, you know, thrived off that feeling. You know, people were like, oh, you turned yourself in. I know you feel stupid now. And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't feel stupid. I actually feel like an adult. <laughs> I feel like I was handling my responsibility. You know, so it really, it really would, would help me. That also helped me get through the time, just knowing that I'm here because I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, what I needed to, to, to do. No matter how bad or negative it was. Exactly. You know, you knew you had to go through that in order to have another chance out here. And, you know, sometimes... This is why a lot of the decisions I've made were bad ones was because, you know, you weigh the outcome and then you're like, eh, nah, I'm not going to make the hard choice. You know, I'm going to go with the easy route. Of course. Right. But this being making a decision and having the hardest outcome I could think of, you know, having to be do a year and in being incarcerated any other choice that I'm going to have to make out here, the you know the outcome of it can't be that bad. So I know that I'm gonna be able to make the right choices. You know, does that make? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. You know, it was just like it was like the beginning. You know, I had to do the hardest thing first. You know, lift. You know, like lift the heaviest box first. Move the heaviest box first. You know, and everything else is downhill from there. You know, so that's really how I felt about it, and it it, it was good. All right, so let's move on and look at some other stuff that you got inside of this bag. I see you got your little, your little hair tie. Do you like Do you like your hair? Because it is a lot longer than when you. Got it's a lot longer in the back, and it's like screen door in the front. <laughs> now I got a lot of paperwork. Of course, you got your court stuff. Well, this is actually, you know, some people know I was um, I was writing short stories and stuff while I was locked up. This is a lot of the um the stuff that I wrote in here. You know, so maybe we could do something with that, possibly help you get some of this stuff published. That would be really cool. Um, man, the books were a really big thing for me. You did a lot of reading. Yeah, I did a lot of reading. I see some Stephen King books right here. I read the whole Dark Tower series. This is all... How many books were you reading while locked up? Like a book a week? Uh, yeah. Um, sometimes, depending on how good the book was, I read a... Um, I, I'll show you. I read... A, I read one of the, this... I think this one right here. I read that. That's a like a 1,200-page book. I read that in like three days. Wow. I read this book in about... Four days. My God, what is that? About two thousand pages. Dude, you got a lot of books. I mean, these could have made some serious weight bags in in the jail. Yeah, but I was weird for some reason about these books. Like you didn't want people borrowing them or anything like that. Well, because if you notice, yeah, it goes on. If you notice, um, or if you know, people being locked up, they don't take care of things at all. Right. Now, would you let anybody read these books? Yeah, yeah. I let people read the books. I wasn't a douchebag. But, you know, if, you know, you might see somebody who doesn't really read books, and they're like, hey, man, hey, let me read this Stephen King Ip book. And they don't be doing no reading. You're probably going to be a little little leery, right? I'd be like, um, yeah, bro, I got to send that back so I can get my new books. Dude, you have got a ton of books. This is a year's worth of books right here. And again, how the heck did you get all these books? It was supporters of After Prison Show. Asia. Absolutely, man. And I want to thank them. This was a, a, I let a million people read that. 
And this is a good example of what happens when you let a bunch of people read books in jail. Obviously, you can see this is all taped back together right here. I hope you guys can see that. The pages are falling out of the book. Are y'all ready? Are you ready for this? Yeah, yeah, let's go. All right. What are we What are we getting ready to pull out of here? Oh no, I'm just pulling this out. All right, let's let's see what you got. These are the butt flaps. These are butt flaps. And talk a little bit about what that is. All right, so the toilet in the jail is made completely of stainless steel, and it's it's like. It's like, I don't know. When it's, like you flush on a, it's like sitting on an ice cube. Yeah, and then when you flush the toilet, it's cold water, so it gets colder. It's terrible. And in jail, you take a crap like this. Because you don't, you know, what do they, what do they say? Uh, if, it, if it drops, <laughs> you pop that button. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put water on that. Put some water on that. Yeah, so you constantly are hitting the flush button. <laughs> And it's just, the temperature just continues to drop on the rim of this toilet. So what you do is, you buy some shower shoes, you pull the straps off, and every time you take a crap, you just lay them down, bad boys, right down on the toilet, and you sit on it. And it's like having a cushioned toilet seat, too. It's really, it's really nice. So not only does it keep the toilet warm that would otherwise be freezing, it also makes it a little more comfortable. You know, I was thinking about this, and I'm not sure if you would be okay with it, but I was what a demonstration? No, I oh. was thinking we could probably give away some signed APS <laughs> exclusive merchandise. <laughs> maybe Dave, <laughs> maybe Dave could sign the butt flaps. I'm sure somebody out there might be. Might hey. be or we could put them on eBay and see what they go for. Look, I'm gonna tell you right now, the craziest thing that ever happened to me because of these was my celly seen this and he said, "Hey Dave, can I use those?" Hell no, you can't put your naked butt on my butt flaps. <laughs> you gotta get your own. I mean, it's yeah. one pair per man. Yeah, that's crazy. I couldn't even believe he asked. I was so scared because I used to like leave him out. So you're not even sure if he had it and used them. There's a potential he could have. No, been. after he asked me, I hid them. They yeah, but stay. again, he might have been asking you after oh, he got a chance to experience how comfortable they were. I mean, you never know. And... <laughs> Just kind of probably makes you wonder. Yo. But again, if anybody, <laughs> if anybody's interested, you know, we we will be giving away some signed APS merch, right? And I'm, it doesn't get any more exclusive. That's real. That's Dave's cheeks, dude. <laughs> That's not feet impressions in there. So, pretty <laughs> disgusting, actually. The trays in jail suck, man. They just suck. There's like one or two random ones as good as like chicken patty or sausage tray, and. The sausage tray was actually a good tray there? Yeah, it was like a like a kielbasa sausage, and it was cooked. You know, it was, it was halfway, that was a good tray. Did you guys get chicken trays there? No. So it was just they, chicken they, patty? They've taken that pretty much out of almost every jail. And, and what's the reason for that? Do you got any idea? Um, you know, there's all types of stories going around. People smoking crack out of the bones. Which someone is very getting, true. Someone getting stabbed with Making the Making weapons out of the bones. Yeah. Fighting over the trays. Oh, God. People will kill over a piece of chicken. It's crazy. And, I mean, as crazy as that sounds, you may think that sounds funny, but you you got to understand, this is one of the best trays that you're going to get while locked up. It's, so. like, it's like street food. It, I mean, you, it's chicken and on it, the bone. And it's going to cause a lot of problems. Yeah. But, um, so you're telling me that the trays, they're horrible. Yeah, the trays suck. And so, they, they just have no flavor. Everything is s extremely bland because, you know, you got, uh, you know, dietary issues when you're dealing with that many people. So, you can't add salt. This Sodium. Person. Sodium's going to be an issue. Yeah, so. High blood pressure. So, um, what I would do is. I would save the seasoning packs from my soups. And I began to fill this little bottle right here. It's a shampoo bottle. You can see I've used it because the letters are all coming off. It actually says all in one. It was kind of a coincidence because this is all the seasoning packs in one. Right. You know what I'm saying? From the ramen noodles, the soups that you're not, or the yeah. seasoning packs you're not using yeah, while you're cooking. Yeah, we got uh, Cajun chicken, picante beef, spicy vegetable, regular chicken, shrimp. So there's a lot of flavor in there. A lot of flavor, and I just 
sprinkle it on there. Some people got real fancy with their salt shaker and like poked holes in the lid so that you could just like squeeze it all, you know. I mean, I didn't do that. Season it. Flavor for bland. Maselli was pissed. He was like, dude, you're not going to leave me the season? I was like, no, nah, that's coming home. <laughs> you got to be able to show everybody I got what a year was like, to, you know, and how to try to make it better. Joe sent me some money the, the first five minutes I was locked up. And this is what I ordered. This is my first commissary order. This is the order that they they gave me coming out of uh, the hole. I see some shampoo. I see some uh, some deodorant, some soap, some soap, soap dish, toothbrush, comb, paper, pen, plastic cup, keefy coffee, some rice, some ginger snaps, saltine crackers, summer sausage. Uh, you got some soups on here. How many soups did you order? You ordered 15 soups, and that cost you $15. <laughs> My God. Uh, two bags of Cheetos, some jalapeno nacho cheese. What's that, the cheese spread? Yeah. You got three pickles, some tortillas, some chili refried beans, and some large stamped envelopes. You know, I just did a video talking about the absolute necessities that you have to order immediately upon going to prison or even just getting to the jail. Yeah. And it's quite obvious just by the beginning of this uh, order form right here, you know, the shampoo, the deodorant, the soaps, the hygiene is absolutely... For two reasons. You need that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And when you see a guy and he gets his commissary every week and there ain't shit in there but zoom zooms and wham whams. That's all he gets is soups and chips and honey buns. You get to thinking, you're like, what are you using when you get in the shower and get out of the shower? There's no deodorant, there's no soap, like, no toothpaste? Like, what in the world is going on? Like, how you living, bro? <laughs> Not well. And it sucks for everybody else. Because they gotta smell them. Oh my God. Dude, there are some people in jail with some breath. Like, it's... Like, I've never smelled anybody's breath outside of jail that is as bad as this. It is, it smells like a battery got busted open. <laughs> it is the worst smell in the world. And the crazy thing is, we could be in in a, in a chow line, right? You're behind me. We're in a chow line. Say something. Hey, Dave, what's going on, man? Hey, Dave, can you hear me? Hey, that's you, ain't it, Dave? Hey, Dave. <laughs> hey. What's up, man? You need to slay the dragon, brother. I, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Two of your teeth are dead. <laughs> <laughs> they are dead. The two teeth that are, that are in the way back of your mouth are black. What, you a dentist, day? No. I smell. <laughs> your breath smells like who done it? <laughs> like a whole can of Padoodoo. That is bad. And you were dealing with this a lot while... And look, people hated me because, you know, I'm a funny guy, right? So I got to put it out there, right? I'd be like, this is what I did to one dude. I walked up to him. I was like, yo, your homeboys do not like you <laughs> at all. He was like, who are you talking about? Whoever you rock with, they don't like you one bit. He's like, man, why you say that? Because your breath stinks and then nobody told you. The one lonely white guy who you don't ever really talk to has to let you know that you need to go brush your teeth, bro. Gargle, do something, hit the tongue. Like really, you know, hit that tongue. Take that layer of funk off your, it's bad. What'd he say when he told him this? Like his feelings was hurt. And then, you know, in jail, and they want to do getting their feelings, he's like, he was mad. He was ready to fight. <laughs> yeah, he was ready to fight. So you know what I did? And got my train, kept it moving. It's always in the tray line. It's like breakfast time, I swear to God. People sleep completely dressed, shoes on and everything. They're like, trays. And they're gone. High stepping to go get this food, man. The food is not that good, man. Get up. Splash some water on your face. Swish something around in your mouth. Spit that out. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. 
The hygiene is definitely a must. The breath is the worst thing. It's a, I'd rather someone sit at the table and fart than some of the breath that I smell is bad. Is bad. So on to the next item after that, right? What you got here? See, in Hannah Rose Regional, you don't, you can't get a toothbrush holder. So you can buy Q-tips, and when the Q-tips are gone. Your toothbrush fits inside. That is the toothbrush they sell you on commissary? That is my last toothbrush. Still smells like Colgate. Yes. That's you know, the usually that's the toothbrush they give you for the indigent pack, which is for guys who can't make commissary. No, that's a dollar. So that's actually what they're selling you. Yeah, you get that for a dollar. And I guess the reason they're not selling you a full-size toothbrush is because less than the chance. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to be doing too much damage with that. The only damage you actually do with this is to yourself. Dude, I've injured myself so many times brushing with this toothbrush. Like, to get in the way back, I've, like, busted my lip. Like, punch myself right in the face. Bam! You know what I'm saying? You got to really, to get back there is... All right. Sucks. So you got your little makeshift toothbrush holder out of a Q-tip uh, container right there. My hair got long. So you remember I went into jail with uh, the brace with all the ace bandages wrapped around it? Right. But once I didn't need the brace or the ace bandages no more, I began to rip up the ace bandages and I made, I guess, scrunchies. Air ties. Yeah, that's what these are. Now, you, if you were in prison, you wouldn't have had that hair at all. They would have no. definitely made you cut that. Yeah, you got to. You know, I told you yesterday you looked like uh, Tom Hanks from Castaway. I had it all wrong. You actually looked like Nicolas Cage from Con Air. <laughs> <laughs> or. Or Cody. Or Cody. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, look, oh, yeah. I got more paperwork. Okay, you can sit that up there. All right. Um, this is an envelope. It's full of mail that I got from uh, fans, friends, family. Oh. I see the APS Army drawn on the front of that right there. Oh, yeah. I drew, I drew a few things on the um, on my uh, envelope. Some fiery bars underneath it. And then I got... My nickname in there was Crazy Dave, so they called me Crave. It's kind of Crave. Crave. It's not a good nickname. Crazy hey, Dave. Hey, hey Crave, what, what, what's going on with you, Crave? Yeah. I'm craving me some Crave. Yeah. You know what this is, don't you, Joe? That is, uh, oh, that's your update sheet. That's exactly what that is. So, Dave served all of his time. In two different jails. He would have only served it in one jail had it not been for whatever reason he ended up getting transferred to the second jail. However, even with the fact that Dave served all of his time in the jail, he was doing prison time, which meant that he was doing time for the state. It's just the way that they sentence you. Had they sentenced Dave to 11 or 12 months, that would have been city time. But they sentenced him instead to a year. Any time that you're sentenced to that's in years, one year, 10 years, 100 years, you're going to prison. But even if you don't get to prison, you're still serving prison time. And because of that, you're supposed to get one of these, I think every year, aren't you? It's every year. Because yeah, your time every time you do, you go in front of your counselor for, uh, was it the review? Uh, yeah, it's like a yearly review, a classification review. And what they'll do is, like say you're serving more than a year, like in my case, I served seven years. Every year I would have to go in front of a counselor and they would do a, a classification review and they would talk about any trouble that I got in and any charges that I might have caught, maybe for tattooing or fighting. And vice versa, too. Don't make, always make it look bad. Like, if you had gotten trouble and you were doing, doing better... Good. Yeah, if you didn't get in any go, trouble... You go in front of the, your for your review, they could give you some of your good time back. Right, but every year that you would be serving, you would get a new update sheet and you would either be losing good time, meaning your release date would be getting a little bit further <laughs> away, or you would be gaining good time and your release date might be either where it's supposed to be or... It's not ever really going to go any closer than that. But we see Dave's got his total sentence here. It says one year, zero months, zero, zero days. days. And it says uh, parole eligibility, ineligible. Mandatory, mandatory parole release, ineligible because... There is no parole in the state of Virginia. There is no parole. But it does have his release date up here. Good time release date was 
was yesterday, 326, 2018. Now, had Dave gotten in any trouble, this date could have definitely changed if you would have been catching charges or anything like that. And did you catch any charges while you were locked up? No, I got questioned for a few things that, you know, stuff goes on in the pod. They look at the camera, you know, if you do something and me and you're always kicking, they'll come talk to me, you know. Of course, I was involved in, you know, stupid stuff, making pins and whatever. You know what I'm saying? They always, you know, you see a pin, they're wondering if it's a shank. You know, they come question you. Or if people are smoking in the pod, they're going to come question people. You know what I'm saying? So I've been questioned for some things, but I didn't catch any charges. No That's one. good, considering the fact that you did have some problems in there, yeah. some fights. And we're going to get into that later. We won't get into that too much right now. I want to save that for a later time and just continue to move on with the things that you do have in here. All right. My, we were just, I was just talking about the pens. Okay, so this is really awesome. This reminds me a lot of when I was serving time. You would make these right here. Now, what this is, this is a writing pen. It's had some work done to it because the writing pens that they sell you are called safety pens. And you could literally tie this pin in a knot if you wanted to. So you have to literally roll this pin in some paper. He's got saran wrap and probably some tape around this, making this sturdy so that you can write with this. Because if you were going to try to write with this any other way, uh, this thing would be all over the place. It would be very easy to hold on to or write with. Uh, there's one right there, as a matter of fact. There's the real deal. So you can see as I'm <laughs> holding this, you know, this thing is just... It's not very it's not very sturdy. It's pretty flexible. That's what actually it's called. It's a called flex. a safety flex pen. Safety flex pen. And not because it's cool. That's pretty interesting. I haven't seen one of those in a long time. All right. Um, this is something I love doing. You know, Joe, probably, I got to say, probably my best friend. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, um, you definitely, just in, this, just in this time since I've gotten clean, you showed me really what a real friend is. I never had... You know any real friends you know I thought I did but no when I was at my lowest you know what I'm saying you didn't run off and it was, it was like you know nah, you know fuck. no you you were you were there for me man you know what I'm saying so I, I consider you my best friend so when I talk about things I didn't talk about getting high and hanging out and doing this and doing that I talked about the YouTube channel and, you know, which I'd get off the phone with you and I'd be like, man, my homeboy just did this or went here. And, you know, that's what I talked about. And a lot of guys can't wait to get out to subscribe to this thing. That's awesome. Yeah. Literally, like, there's guys with cups like this that have, like, after prison show on. Really? And, yeah. They think it's crazy. So we started our own thing in the morning. After breakfast, we would sit around after we were done eating and drink coffee and, you know, talk trash and joke and you know whatever and uh we called it the after breakfast show <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's pretty awesome yeah well my friend made me this cup man the cups don't have any lids on it and you make a cup of coffee you don't have no microwave so the water is as hot as it'll get in the sink and your cup of coffee is cold in the you know in five minutes unless you freaking slam it back so he made this cup. I call it the cooler cup. Why? Because my cup is cooler than yours. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. <laughs> so we got the um, we got APS on here in uh, hostage letters, ransom letters, ransom letters. That's right. And then just random Lollapalooza. Uh, we're going to go ahead with the Lollapalooza lid. But this cup is so sweet, right? It's just a regular plastic cup. But this is styrofoam that he cut out of the um, the hot plate trays. Okay. And then he got some plastic and wrapped it up. Then he cut the lid, or he cut the top off of, like, some ointment tube. Right. And he took the top part of it that he cut off and put it on the bottom. And he took the cap to it, and he twisted it together. So now it's got, like, a little handle. He actually made this thing. It is... That's pretty impressive. It is actually really ingenuitive. Yeah. I was like, yo, this is really cool. So now I got a lid for my cup that's made of styrofoam, which we know that can keep things cold or keep them warm. Hot. Yeah. Right. Well, wraps the outside with uh, the aluminum foil chip bags. Then he used the top rim of the styrofoam cups that they get, the little styrofoam cups. He wrapped the whole thing with that. If you can see how it looks, it's like rigid. You can see it. And then 
the bottom of it, and then he wrapped it in it's like saran wrap plastic. He made you a Yeti mug. Yeah, dude, and it really works. I believe it. It looks like it's got a lot of insulation to it. So before this cup became cooler than your cup, you got to mark your cup when you get one. Right, of course. You got to know your cup. Somebody could take your cup. Somebody might accidentally be using your cup. Hey, why are you drinking out of my cup, man? Your mouth smells like... <laughs> <laughs> who done it? <laughs> you did. <laughs> That's who did it. Look, what, can you see what I engraved at the bottom of the cup? It says APS. APS, man. I was from from the gate, man. There's Everything. some other things engraved in here as well, though. Oh, it says my mug. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't going to, like, I want to keep this. Yeah, that is super impressive. I like that a lot. You showed me that earlier, and I was just completely blown away. I've never seen anything like that. The radio. This is my this, this is my AM, FM radio. The lifeline to the outside world when there is no other lifeline. This thing took a took a lick and kept ticking. Took I believe it. and kept ticking. Look, it comes with a clip. Clips broke off. Yeah, clip broke off a long time ago. Popped probably, somewhere. I don't even know where to. Where probably the first time you dropped it. Yeah. No, actually, you know, your headphones cord gets caught on something while it's clipped on, and then snatches off. The, this goes this way, and the clip. I couldn't find it. I think it was like. It just popped off and flung. I didn't, go, I didn't even go looking for it. I was like, screw it. I'm not even going to do that no more. How about them headphones right there? What kind of... Hold on. I'm going to get to the headphones. I want to show the damage that's been done to this thing. Like, if you notice, there's like a... I got like a little string wrapped around the front of this because the front... Just falls right off. Yeah, this piece of plastic, I call it my dashboard. It's the part where it tells you what um, channel you're on. The back don't stay on. And this is the coolest part, right? There's a hole in my radio. There's a hole in my radio right where the wires are that connect the power button to the batteries, right? The little black and red wires, you can see it. Yeah. Right? And there's a hole right there. And I was like, oh my God, that's going to suck. You know, it's going to, the wires are going to end up coming out of the thing. It's going to be broken. So I grabbed the first sticker I could off the deodorant. Rip a piece off of it, smack it on there. Right. Extra effective protection. I mean, it couldn't have worked out any better. You know what I'm saying? And it's been there for a year. That happened like immediately. You can tell it's like peeling off. There's some pubic hair in there. It's got to grow. These are the headphones. All right, I got, I got them all. They're all rigged up, dude. Like the same guy who made the cup was the radio guy. That's what his nickname was, actually. Did he make these little, or no, they, they come? No, they come with uh, the over-the-ear thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, right? But if you look... They're definitely broke apart. There's two different headphones here. Yeah, I see that. One of them looks like the one that came with it. Another one looks like another pair of headphones uh, that have been put in place there. Yeah, so, you know, it's just... It's just Jerry rigged up, man. You gotta make it work because they're not gonna sell you anything that's gonna be worth a damn. It's gonna break, it's gonna fall apart, and if you don't got anybody in there who knows how to work on those things, you're not gonna be listening to music for very long. Yeah, because this radio... How many times have you had that thing worked on? Actually, none. Really? I didn't have to have it worked on, none. Well, what about the headphones? Like three times. <laughs> Four times. Four times. Forty dollars. For this little stupid, it's thirty seven ninety nine. In prison, that thing ain't nothing but like twenty bucks. No, the Sony ones were like fifteen something, weren't they? Now, what I'm saying at the most. Yeah, 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 at the most. And then those ain't even the headphones that come with this. So how much are the headphones? Ten bucks. So you're talking fifty dollars altogether? No, actually fifty four dollars because you got it's four dollars for a pack of batteries. That's crazy. That's an indigent form right there. If you have no money, this is what you're going to be uh, sending in. You put your name on it, your inmate number, and what you will get. You can get this every week. Well, if you look at it, it says week one. Yeah, the first week of the month, you can get a box of laundry detergent because in Chesapeake Jail, you got washer wash and dryer in the pot. You get bo one box of laundry detergent. It's a little box of all. You get a little thing of state shampoo. Like what your salt shaker was made yeah. out of. A little thing of deodorant, it doesn't work. It's like a little clear roll-on. A security toothbrush, which you've is seen like what that. You just got. Flex pen, you've seen that. 
and then a writing pad and five stamp envelopes. And then the rest of the weeks, you can get five. You stamps. get five envelopes every week. Right. Right. So if you don't have any money with just what you heard right there, uh, you're not going to be doing too good at all. You better find a hustle. You better find something because uh, a box of laundry detergent, shampoo, deodorant, security toothbrush, flex pen, and, and all of these hygiene items they're giving you are, are horrible. They're not going to do any justice to covering up the funk or anything like that. Yeah, and <laughs> that stuff is just not worth, you know, like that deodorant, you got to like, every time you walk by your cell, you should stop and put some of it on. Yeah. This is the box that the radio came in. I just used it to like put stamps and addresses and phone numbers, you know, from people that wrote me and stuff. It's just a bunch of, just, you know, you, you're locked up, you use whatever you get. I got this box. I was like, huh, I can keep this instead of having a whole bunch of little pieces. Because when you get mail, they rip the address, address off. off and give it to you. So I just put it in there. Right? This is all the paperwork they gave me when I left. Your release paperwork? Yeah, just signing out, you know, uh, all my stuff. This is more... Um, is that the shot? Yeah. Is that the infamous shot that you? This were is my. This was my favorite shot. Now, before we even talk about this any further, let's just stop and talk it's about not... the shot. A shot is definitely going to be, you know, when you're going on a prison date, you're going to be spending a lot of time by yourself. You're going to be doing a lot of thinking about, you know, if you could be with a woman. And I see that you've got this little picture right here. Dave says this is his favorite picture. And it's not. It's not vulgar either. Right. So there's there's like no penetration. Or no nudity. Right. But she was just extremely sexy. And this was my favorite shot, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a nice shot, right? Yeah. I mean, basically, it's just a chicken, like a little but bikini. But, dude, she looks like she would date a prison dude. Like, I mean, she got So, I'm sure you on. gave this chick a name and a story. and then Oh, yeah. You guys had a whole life together while you were doing that year. Yeah. What's her name? Elena. Where's she from? Spain. <laughs> How'd you meet her? <laughs> you really want to know? I, I definitely want to hear this. See, in my dreams, I was there at the you know the night you went out and was hanging out and we everybody was hanging out with your uh with, with Rainy. Right. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. No, you're fine. With your fiance. And, and you I met. met I met. Yeah, I met Elena. Did she just come in from Spain? <laughs> Actually, yeah, I was, I, I had to, the great, she doesn't speak a lick of English. Oh, okay. And, and I don't speak Spanish. So how did you guys communicate? I was like. All right, well, enough about all of that. Can I show no, you we're not gonna we're not going to put Elena out there, man. Some bands, some more ideas from writing, and I got a little rap here that I was rapping against some dude in there. I just spit a few bars at him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How'd it go? I was like, I'll spread your girl on my sheets like she's a condiment. <laughs> said my taste... <laughs> I said, she said my taste sweet. She called it a condiment. I pulled out the rubber. She asked, what the condiment? <laughs> I ain't messing with you raw, I said. I'm only condiment. <laughs> and that's what, uh, that what I said. And then they... I can see you only wrote a little bit to it, so I'm guessing that's where the rap career started and ended at. And ended, yeah. So I'm pretty sure we've gone through the entire bag. Dave's entire last year in a black hefty trash bag. All gone. And now Dave's life here in the free world has begun again. High five. Hey, look! That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment or condiment. Let me know exactly what you thought about it. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free the, world, the free world, and make the most of every day. Yeah, you should do that again. Why? It was pretty good. I, I tricked you up. No, you I mean I was gonna. I was gonna. You forgot more. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. What did I forget? You said, "Enjoy, enjoy life, life, the free world." world. Never, never take. You didn't put that in there. I didn't. No. Until next time, enjoy life, the free world, never take a moment for granted, and make, make the, the most, most of every day. day. Peace! 